meals and of course some tasty treats. I'm hoping to taste it in the near future. And before we get st started, I'd like to, to introduce our program coordinator and MC for tonight, Phil Frey. So he's the man right, I see him on top. <laughs> Wave high. Exactly. Hello. Hi, Phil. So, and of course, the reason why you are all here tonight, a man who needs little to no introduction. You've seen him, you've seen him on the Food Network. And tonight he's coming directly from his New York kitchen, um, Ron Ben Israel. So thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Before we start, Ron, I just want to say thank you on behalf of JNF Montreal and JNF Canada for graciously doing this uh, from your heart. Um, it, we really appreciate it. We're very happy that you are here with us and it's helping us cope through uh, difficult times through the art of baking. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you so much for doing this. And without further ado, let's get to business. Thank you so much. Great. So welcome everyone um, to my humble kitchen in New York City. I love my own home kitchen and I design it very differently than the bakery. It's all in shades of red, bright red as you can see, shiny black, stainless steel, great atmospheric lighting. But we never considered that we'll have to broadcast from here. So I know mm -hmm. in the shadows, it looks a little bit like I'm in a horror movie. But <laughs> I'm not enacting the 10 plagues. I'm just inviting you in and I hope that you'll forgive our production values which are a little bit on the low side there's no music there's no editing it's all live mm -hmm. uh, but I hope that you'll forgive me and we'll move on with the content I've been actually thinking today about what's happening you know I was supposed to be shortly in Toronto myself for two weeks this early spring to shoot um, for two weeks uh, new episodes of the big bake it's gonna be the second season and I was very much looking forward to spending two weeks in Toronto, a, a city where I went to school and I started my baking career many years ago. But that is not, uh, that is not happening right now. Hopefully we can do the shoots on, in July. Uh, so everything is upside down. We don't know what's going on. It feels like we were added an 11th plague and this time everybody is affected. So what I've been doing at home, since our business is considered non-essential and we had to shut down, is baking and cooking. And it gives me a lot of um, solace and a lot of comfort. Sometimes I'm not very concentrated and I forget something in the recipe and I have to start over. And I also experiment on new things. So I decided that for today, we're gonna make a cake that is very simple. It's really fail-proof, I promise you, Nobody can fail. And it's pretty easy and quick. And it's designed for children to participate because my mom, uh, before she would go to work, would let me and my sister do this cake and we would improvise. It would be, would be ready pretty quickly. So don't judge, just enjoy the process. And you can work with me or you can work later. Now I'm gonna step aside and wash my hands. And if you have any questions, you can chat with Phil, our moderator, and he's gonna be late to me and later on we'll open the discussion. So give me one minute, I'm stepping over to the sink. One question that's already come up is, I've been asked how to see Ron as your main focal point on your screen. So assuming that you're logged in on a computer, on the top right, you're gonna see something that may say gallery view, it may say speaker view. You're gonna to wanna to set yours to speaker view, which will then highlight Ron every time he speaks throughout the event. I have no problem speaking, <laughs> even though it's funny to hear my own accent. Obviously, I was born in Tel Aviv, and I've been in New York for many years, but the accent doesn't go away. So let's start. What we have, our basic ingredient, half a box of matzo, and to keep things not only pav, but also interesting, I'm going to use coconut milk. There are many variations. I know this is uh, upside down, but this is um, dairy-free coconut milk, unsweetened. It comes in many variations. You can also get cans of coconut milk, 
if you get the coconut cream, it will be sweetened. So it will be even more delicious. Uh, you can use cashew milk, almond milk. You could use soy milk, rice dreams, anything that is non-dairy and made out of uh, vegetable sauce. And then we have a lot of little things that I'll add on. And the other important thing is high quality chocolate. So this is a semi-sweet or actually bittersweet chocolate that has very strong adult flavor of chocolate. But you can use many different kinds. They will all work. The only issue is that when you start changing recipes, things happen. So for instance, because we are using coconut milk, which is very liquid, I'm using more chocolate. If you're gonna use almond milk, which is thicker, you can use more milk. So instead of one cup of liquid coconut milk, you can use up to one and a half cups. It's the difference between using regular milk and heavy cream. So when we make ganache, which, which is a traditional pastry cream, it's like a truffle filling, uh, you always use more if you have a thicker liquid. Does that make sense? I know you can answer me, but if anybody has questions about the process, just type in, in the chat window for Phil and he'll relate to me. Now, another interesting thing is in the kitchen where we have the health department supervised, we always wear gloves, uh, but not every process, and of course there's hair covering, but not every process is comfortable with gloves. Sometimes when you work with sticky icing, it's just impossible. The rule is to wash your hands in commercial kitchens as often as possible. And every uh, professional bakery or kitchen will have a dedicated hand sink that's part of the law in all over the world. But because now we are very aware, and many times we end up touching our face or our head and then the food, even though I don't believe there's danger at home because I'm making something for somebody else, out of respect and extra caution, I wear gloves. Plus they're fun, they come in all colors, and it's a chance to practice. So far so good. I'm asking because I'm waiting for the audience. Phil, do we have any comments so far? So far you're clear as crystal. Okay. I, oh, you're doing great, you're doing great, thank you. Thank you. I've made the recipe many times, so I'm making half the recipe because I have so many leftovers. I'm gonna put this half cup, but your recipe calls for one cup of coconut milk into the microwave for about two minutes to boil. I'll be right back. Unlike on the magic of the Food Network, we actually have to wait those two minutes while he does microwave them. Okay, so here's the deal. I don't believe in making too many dishes. I like to work in a very organized way and save, otherwise I have a huge pile of dishes. I'm gonna show you how to economize. I measured the milk into a glass heat-proof container or a cup. So I measured into it and now I'm boiling it in the microwave. You know, you could have three, already you could have wasted three different containers. First measure, then put it in a pot, then boil, then pour. And now I only have one and we even use it further. I'm stepping over to the microwave to watch the cream boil. Meanwhile, I'm gonna use the, the food processor this is cuisine art, but there are many different kinds, to chop the chocolate. So this is a, the recipe calls for two cups. It's gonna be a little noisy and I'm putting my hand on top and pulsing. Sorry for the noise. So instead of chopping with a knife, I'm using the machine. Let me show you how fine it is. And we can do a little finer. But the nice thing about the food processor, it does the work for you, and you don't have to take a heavy knife and chop the chocolate.
So it's hard to see on the computer camera, but it's finely chopped. Ron, we have a question from Gita. She'd like to know if it's two minutes for the almond milk. No, uh, that is a good question, but it's impossible to answer. In my microwave, it takes two minutes for milk or cream to boil, but it depends on the side of the microwave. It depends on the um, consistency of the cream or the milk. So you really have to time your own microwave. Debbie from Toronto wants you to know this is way better than watching the Food Network. Thank you. <laughs> Here's the boiling milk and I'm running the motor and pouring the cream. Stop for a minute. So basically the hot liquid is melting the chocolate while the motor keeps turning it to smooth and make sure there's no, no lumps. So this I can tell you to mix for about a minute. Traditionally, the French way is to chop the chocolate by hand, pour the heavy cream on top and gently mix for about 15 minutes. But we have machines And we are no longer a slave in Egypt. That was a joke, if you didn't get it. Let's see. I'm laughing, Ron. It's very funny. <laughs> Me too. That's really funny. <laughs> Thank you. Ron, we have one question for you. Wanting to know, can we use any type of milk? Yes. So normally the traditional recipe is with heavy cream and that would make the truffle filling. But I was looking for a parv substitute and also a vegan substitute. And my favorite is coconut milk, but you can use and the recipe calls for any type of vegetable based milk, cashew, almond, um, what else is there? Soy milk, rice milk is great. Anything like that will work. And now that I have the chocolate melted and it's very liquidy with the coconut milk, I pour it back into the same container. Remember what we talked about making dishes? Unless you really love doing dishes, I didn't have to dirty another container. And what I would like to implore you to be very careful if you're involving kids, the dangerous thing in a KitchenAid is the blade. It is very, very sharp. So please don't let kids uh, use the machine unsupervised. But all the other elements are easy. So this is my liquid ganache. And this I made last night. See, it's not gonna pour. It's very solid. And this is this ganache that set a few hours in room temperature have become like a truffle filling. It smells amazing and it's ready for frosting. So if you want to speed up, take the liquid ganache and put it in the fridge, but you can just leave it at room temperature for a few hours and it will solidify. The chocolate will seize and the creaminess of the coconut milk will lend it the spreadability. Listen to my English, spreadability. Ron, just to confirm, you use two cups of chocolate? Yes. The recipe I just demonstrated is a half quantity because I have so much chocolate around and I don't know what to do with it. But the full recipe is two cups, sorry, two cups of chopped chocolate and one cup of liquid. And the liquid can be increased if it's very thick. So obviously cashew or almond milks are thicker than coconut. I'll give it a moment to sink. And I'm gonna have leftovers, I already saw that. So the next, after we finish the kit, I'm gonna take the leftover ganache and make little balls and dip them in coconut. That's just thinking about what to do when you have leftovers. We never have to get rid of good chocolate. Are we ready to move on to the next task? 
which is easy, assembling the cake. So I have a plate, of course, with red. And I have my ganache. And then, instead of baking, we're going to use ready-made matzos. To soak them, to give them a little more moisture, I'm using coconut milk. But as the recipe says, you could use cold coffee, sweet wine, uh, orange juice, apple juice, anything that you like. And I'm using store-bought matzos. They usually come 11 for a pack, so you can make two cakes, or you can make a very, very tall cake. It's up to you. There are no rules. Before I start, I'm going to adhere the bottom matzo with a dab of your choice filling. So they will just help it to stick. And then the matzo goes into the liquid, just for a little bit. You know, guys, it's hard to work without getting feedback. So I would appreciate if you send uh, a line or two to Phil and he can let me know how you guys doing. And I just made, I admit on purpose, the first boo-boo. I broke the corner of the matzah, but I did do it in purpose because I wanted to show you that there's nothing to be afraid. And if anything breaks, you just stick it back with a little bit of filling nobody will know the difference. Actually, it will make it even better. We got so, somebody, Ron, who loves your red accessories. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Have a visit. So let me think about it. I'm going to do, um, I also love peanut butter, jelly, and chocolate together. So I'm going to do a layer of peanut butter, jelly, then chocolate, then peanut butter, chocolate. Okay, I don't know. So this Question, is, Ron, is that, are we soaking for like a minute? How, like, what's the texture of the matzo that you know it's enough soaked? No, it's totally soggy. Otherwise it will uh, decompose. Just a little moist and there's um, a little moisture on top, but it's still keeping its shape. The moisture will be held inside and later on will spread out, but you don't want it to be so soggy that it will fall apart. Ron, the gentleman next to Galit is a huge fan of yours, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's good to hear live people uh, feedback. Otherwise, I don't know if you are falling asleep. Oh, right now, they're saying you're doing a great job. Even though it's not complicated, you're making it a lot of fun. Do I? You're... Sorry, I have a question. I'm a little bit behind and I can't go back to the recipe because I'm going to lose. Oh, Gita, Gita's I'm here. very low tech. I can't get back to anything. So I don't know what the recipe is at this point. Uh, if I Do I add the almond milk to the chocolate that I uh, processed in the food processor? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm at that point. I'm a little behind. It's okay. But very important to realize is you don't have to, to make the recipe of classic ganache, which is fun to do, and it's amazingly delicious and very, it actually tastes expensive, if such a thing can be, because if you're using high quality chocolate. Ron, we have a question. If you don't, for somebody who does not eat peanuts on Pesach, is there a substitution they can use? Of course. So let me just say that you can use ready-made ingredients, and if you have any allergies, and if you have any uh, dietary, dietary restrictions, just choose what you would eat normally. For instance, if you don't eat peanuts, you can use tahini. If you don't use sesame, you could use Nutella. Anything that is around the house, I actually sometimes use halva, which is made out of sesame seeds. Arla wants to know, what about dulce de leche? Wonderful. The only thing with dulce de leche is that it's very rich, so I would use a very small amount. And it doesn't even have to be spread evenly. Also, for those of you who just joined in, uh, the, the whole event is being recorded. It will be posted online um, and emailed to all the subscribers as well, so you will have a copy of all this. The recipe will be sent back to you. 
as well as other recipes of Ron's. So you'll have full access to everything after the event. Thanks, Phil. So this is the second. We are really sandwichy. You know, the ganache is a traditional French preparation for filling mousses and truffles. And what we are doing, the matzah now, is also a traditional um, dessert called Napoleon. So the Napoleon is made of many thin layers of um, crispy pastry dough. And also there's another French dessert called Milfia, which means thousand layers. And in Europe, you also make a cake like this with crepes. So we are, that's the same idea. You see the matzah is still rigid, just had liquid that got caught in the ridges. And then I place it on top and press lightly. So the liquid with the filling, everything will become a delicious cake. Now I'm going to work with the chocolate ganache. So Ron, what if we used coffee instead of the milk to soak the matzah? Delicious. Yes, it would, it would, it would, it would we leave it at the same amount of time inside? No, 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 just, of course, room temperature or cold coffee. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is just uh, use leftovers, sweeten or unsweeten, as you like. I'm spreading the chocolate now, as you can see. I'm going to show you a close-up. There we go, high tech. Another layer of matzo. So let's uh, revise. We use the dab of frosting to adhere the first matzo on the plate. Then I personally chose to use um, peanut butter and a little jelly on top, strawberry jelly, my favorite. Then I soak the second matzo, put it on top and smeared the chocolate filling a chocolate ganache but you can use ready-made of your choice and now i'm laying the third one just shake up the extra liquid place it on top who can guess what's next what's the next filling peanut butter no hey, you said it Whoever said it wins. Me. Could you send me your cake by mail? <laughs> me first. Can you lightly, can you lightly microwave uh, marshmallows and then put layers of marshmallows in between? You know, that sounds amazing. How about using, uh, but you know, you could purchase ready-made spreadable marshmallow under the brand name Fluff. So rather than remelting the marshmallow, you can purchase them in the frosting form. Delicious. Or you can use uh, mini marshmallows and you can use chopped nuts and chopped candies. Anything in, anything in the pantry could be used. Thank you. Remand a little more. Try to get all the way to the corners. Even though, as I said in the beginning, this is foolproof. There's absolutely no way to fail. So whatever you do will work. And now a little bit of jelly on top. Ron, we have a question from Gita. She wants to know, her ganache is not very solid. It's quite liquidy. Did she do anything wrong or did she just not let it uh, set long? Right now with us. Gita, if you made the recipe with me, you need to wait at least six hours because the cream or the milk were hot and they melted the chocolate. And now it will take a few hours to solidify. If you did nothing wrong, you just have to wait. You can speed up the process by putting the ganache in the refrigerator 
and stirring it every, let's say, twice an hour. But it will still take a while. Think about it, once you melt the chocolate and you added a lot of um, liquid to it, it will take a while to solidify. Debbie from Toronto would like to know, if you're using a different liquid, like coffee, for example, could you use that to melt the chocolate? It would work beautifully. But the only caveat is you'll have to experiment somewhat because each liquid works differently a little bit. Uh, the principle is the, the more liquid uh, milk requires less in the recipe than heavy cream or nut-based milk. And also it depends on the chocolate. I used bitter sweet chocolate, which is very low sugar and high cocoa mass. If you use milk chocolate, you need to reduce the amount of liquid. And there's so many variations between the different uh, manufacturers of chocolate, I couldn't really answer. I personally used Verona chocolate, which is wonderful, and it's almost 70% chocolate. So that's considered very high. I hope that answered the question. Now I have another layer of chocolate. So how many did I use so far? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four matzos. You can stop there, you can add five. It's all permissible. And now I like the idea of the marshmallows, and I wish I had some marshmallows to sprinkle. That could be really nice. Ron, Phil, Phil from Montreal wants to know, New York or Montreal bagels? I have learned the hard way, and I'm not gonna fall to this question. I can tell you that I love bagels, of course. And when I went to learn how to bake bread in school, we practiced a whole week on different types of bagels. I want to tell you that in the building that I live here in Greenwich Village, there's a very famous downstairs, a very famous bagel shop. Um, and they're amazing. But the bagels are huge and very puffy. But two friends of mine from Montreal opened a few years ago in New York City, Black Seed Bagel which is Montreal style, and I love that. And that's not too far from my house as well. So there you go. I love all bagels with a schmear and smoke salmon. Smart answer. I'm going to entertain you with one more layer of peanut. No, I think that enough is enough. We've been playing around. Let me finish the cake with one last layer of chocolate, and then we're going to see where we are. Uh, I would love to answer a few questions now before we proceed, if anybody has a question. If anybody has any questions, you can uh, type in to me that you'd like to ask Ron a direct question and I'll uh, put you on live with them. Ron, I have a question. Can you put the almonds you were talking about or cashews or whatever in between the layers or this just goes on top on the last as a decoration? Uh, if you're talking about chopped almonds on the bottom, on the top, it's all good. Are you talking about almond milk? Could you clarify the question? Galit, you're cutting out. I just wanted to know if we can put them in the middle or it's gonna be, it's gonna unstabilize the cake. Top nuts, they could go in the middle between the layers and they can go on the very top. It's all wonderful. But I wasn't sure if you're referring to almond milk, which is the substitute to the coconut milk and it's part of the recipe for the ganache. Now to finish, I added a little extra on top and you can put layer the extra and let it fall down on the edges and I'll show you in a bit why because that will seal the edges and will give us a little adherence if you want to add more decorations 
And I thank you for your patience. There's no editing, no assistance, and nobody to eat except myself. Ron, we got Liz Cohen who loves watching you on the Food Network and thinks it's very cool to see you live from your own kitchen. <laughs> With no editing. Uncut, raw. It's so much better with no editing. We love it. I think. We could do it every day if you want. <laughs> okay. I wanted to watch, I don't know if I can do it. Um, first of all, I'm gonna take a paper towel and to give it a, the whole presentation a more professional look, wipe the edges of the plate. So we want it to look very clean. All the smear that happened will disappear. Then you can take a fork. Did you hear my New York accent? I said fork. Fork. <laughs> this is gonna be like the River Nile when God split it and allow these Israelites to cross. I can, I can tell you stories. I don't know where they come from. It's very hard to see, but I'll show you in the ready-made one. So I'm just um, waving the fork, creating a little design. Anything goes. And then, I have a little coconut, so we can sprinkle it along the edges. If you like coconut. Ron, if anybody wanted to substitute uh, the coconut with anything else, what else would you suggest? Coconuts, I guess. Uh, chopped candy. I'm just sticking the coconut to the edges of the cake and pushing it up a little bit to create a seal. None of those ingredients are mandatory. It's all whatever you want. And I also have sprinkles, pretty little sprinkles that you can sprinkle the sprinkles. I'll show you in a minute. Mindy wants to know when you're going to come out with the secret ingredients, like on Sweet Genius. Today, everything is a secret ingredient. Whatever you have in the pantry. I did not go out shopping, but you see the little decorations. So I'm ready for a few more questions because through the magic of TV, I'm going to open my fridge and take a substitute cake, which I made yesterday. Because this cake now is too soft, it needs to go to the fridge, and I'll take the other one. So if anybody wants to ask Ron any questions directly, send me a message in the chat. I will put you on live with Ron, and feel free to ask your questions directly. And as if by magic, this is the cake I made yesterday. So it's a little bit more solid because it's set in the fridge. You can see I'm playing with it. I hope nothing happens. And this is today's cake, which is a little bit too soft to cut. If I try to cut today's cake, it will, the filling will come out. This one will see what happens. By the way, I haven't made this cake since I was about six years old. So, and I made it for memory. There's no recipe. So let's hope for the best. <laughs> this is an adventure. And I'm going to change the angle with the hope that you can see better. Not really. Ron, I just got a text message from my mother-in-law who wants to know, can it be frozen? Because right now she freezes everything. Sure, anything can be frozen, as long as you wrap it in many layers of plastic wrap 
and then put in the freezer. Don't put foil next to the food, plastic cup is better. Or if you have a, a container, glass or plastic that is exactly the same shape, then freeze it like this. But it's so easy to make. Yeah, but you can freeze it. And also you can freeze pieces for the middle of the night. So for instance, if I had the round traditional matzos, I would cut the shapes into triangles or wedges, wrap each piece individually and stick it in the freezer. And then in the middle of the night, if you need a little sustenance, you know, because God forbid we should be hungry, then you can take it out and munch. It could be almost like an ice cream sandwich. Lynn, there you go, you can freeze it. We have another question. Someone wants to know how long does it need to be in the fridge before it sets? Some questions I don't have answers because when a recipe goes to be published for TV, you try many different variations in time in a professional kitchen. Here I improvise with the idea to show you that there are no rules and you cannot go wrong. So if you have three to four hours in the fridge, great. If you have overnight, great. If you have two hours, that's fine. There's nothing that can go wrong. I'm ready to cut because I'm hungry. That's my dessert. So I'm gonna take this cake and divide it into little squares. And it's soft and pliable. There's very little resistance and very little crumbs. And each time, wipe the knife so there won't be additional crumbs. So again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in. We can unmute you. You can speak to Ron directly. Lynn Cohen says you look even better in person, by the way, than on TV. She said, this is better than TV? You look better right now than you do on TV. Thank you. This is TV. Well, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Flattery will get you anywhere. So I cut them, the cake, into little squares. So these are more like petty fours. And you can see the layers. These are this is just with chocolate. And in a few hours, I'll cut the other one that has the peanut butter and the coconut and the sprinkles. So you see, those little squares are great. They're almost like little waffles. And I would say that from the traditional matzo that I used, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's about almost 50 pieces. That's great. Ron, you have a question coming in live right now with Mindy. Mindy, you can speak to Ron. Hi, Ron. First of all, I'd like to say it's lovely to see you after watching you so much on television. This is really a lot of fun. Thank you for doing this. And I just want to thank you as well for choosing a recipe that's, first of all, fail-proof and also that uh, involves the children. I have a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old, and they are both going to love doing this with me during Pesach. It's going to be a fun activity and they will get to enjoy the rewards. So thank you so much. Great. And you can enjoy using all natural or organic ingredients and you can give some sweetness. It's all um, choice. Sounds great. Thank you. My pleasure. So I'm really finished. I'm going to have one more piece because this is so delicious and it looks great. Look at the you can see the different layers. And this is just the matzo and the chocolate. And of course, you can add more things to make it interesting. I wish you could join me. Ron, we have another question, this time from my aunt, Carol Simmerman. She wants to know, can you use egg matzo? Can I use? Egg matzo. Or does it have to be a specific kind of matzo? Why not? Sounds amazing. You can use the square, the round, you can use egg matzo, you can use whole wheat, plain. Everything will be amazing. And what about using fresh strawberries? I don't know if this question is for in between or on top. Question. I'm sure it will work. 
but because the fresh strawberries have so much liquid in them, juice, perhaps be careful, but you know, you just have to gauge what will work, but I don't see anything going wrong with few sliced, thinly sliced strawberries. Chocolate chips would work amazingly. Little caramel pieces. Anybody else have any questions? If you have any questions, any questions at all from Ron about this recipe, any recipes, type it in. You let us know if you want to speak to them directly. Um, here we have another one. Can you use mozza farfel? I'm not sure I know. And make little cook and make little cookies out of it. It's similar. You know what? You can do use the leftovers of. See all the leftovers that I have here. Can you eat with a spoon? That would be like a chocolate mousse. You can roll into little balls with mozza farfel. Anything that is done with a chocolate spread could be done with it, even on toast. And you can try, uh, it's not baked cookies, but like, uh, almost like rum balls. I think that's what you meant. How do, how do you right. want the, the balls, the chocolate balls? So from your ganache to chocolate balls? I'd... Well, the ganache has to be refrigerated, so it would be a little um, harder. Hard. Mm. And you just scoop it with a spoon and roll it with coconut or nuts or... Oh, okay. And you can make it um, stiffer by adding um, crushed matzo. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Susan would like to know how many pieces of matzo did you use? How many what? How many pieces of matzo did you use? I used five. Um, so I made two cakes out of one box. You can use six, you can use seven, you can make it very thick and taller. So this version, this version is very thin and creates little squares, but you can build it up. You can use your imagination whatever you have at home. We have another question. If you wanted to make the truffles with alcohol, how much would you add and when would you add it? Uh, you were cut off. If you want to do the truffles without... Could you repeat the question? If you wanted to make the truffles with alcohol, how, would you, uh, how much alcohol would you add and when would you add it? It depends how desperate you are at home. First of all, if you want to use alcohol, I think a few drops. Um, you can um, dip the matzah in sweet wine. Uh, if you make, uh, if you want to use something like Grand Manier or Framboise, just a few drops because it's very potent. All right. Do we have any more questions? This is your chance to ask Ron Ben Israel anything. Going once, going twice. Guys, you've been great. Nobody bothered me, but that's because I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Thank Karen? you very much. Thank you very much. And, and happy, happy Pesach, as happy as we can make it. May we all um, strive for freedom. Yes. You know, there is a saying that uh, in the Haggadah that we read each year, that we all should uh, be considered as if we are liberating by God year by year. So right now we all feel um, slavery and conf confinement, and our goal is to get it released, just like the Haggadah tells the story. On, on behalf of JNF Canada, I'd like to thank you for uh, so graciously hosting this for, for us and for, for your time, which is, I know your, your quarantine, but still we really appreciate uh, your time and your generosity of self and sharing your kitchen. Uh, so from all of us at JNF Canada, I really sincerely thank you and I hope we can do this again uh, after Passover with uh, recipes that we can all enjoy for all year round. We'll do cheesecakes for Shavuot. Oh my God, I love it. We're on. It's a deal. <laughs> Ron, Ron, we will be calling you many times now. <laughs> we love you. Thank you, thank you for hosting. Thank you for the great work of the organization and enjoy the holiday. And we will...
חג שמח, תהיי סך 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 חג שמח, And once again, to everybody, the video of tonight's event will be posted online, uh, most likely tomorrow. We will also email you a copy of the recipe and uh, a link to a couple of other recipes that Ron uh, would like for you guys to have. Great. Great. Okay, I'm going to give up now. Goodbye, everyone. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Ron.